Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Gaming. After nearly two months, Battlefield 5 finally has a new, complete map. Merida's launch has gone quite well. Most players seem to enjoy the map. It's got a good layout and caters well to infantry combat. Visibility is a significant issue on the map, however. There's also a problem with smoke grenades allowing players to see silhouettes through them, making them somewhat useless or they sort of lure you into thinking that you're being obstructed by the smoke grenades when in fact enemy players can see you. Apparently the devs are aware of this issue and they're working to address it. For more info on Merida, be sure to watch my review of the map. The next major patch for Battlefield 5, Update 4.4, is expected sometime in the later half of this month. The small-scale maps Lofoten, Islands, and Provence are releasing in the tail end of the month. With Gamescom coming up on the 21st, it's likely more details regarding the maps, patch, and future content roadmap will be announced. Of course, I'll be covering all the announcements as they happen, so stay tuned for that. Call of Duty Modern Warfare's multiplayer reveal was a massive info dump with new gameplay, announcements, and more. Some of the highlights include a 20v20 mode that looks basically like Battlefield's Conquest mode. Full cross-play support between PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One is also integrated to the new game. In addition to that, there's no season pass, so everybody's getting all the new maps and content. There's a new engine for the game, full weapon customization, an overall return to the franchise's more traditional gameplay roots. It's hard not to be excited for Modern Warfare, especially as a Battlefield player. Assuming the actual game lives up to what Activision showcased in the real event, it could be a massive step for the franchise in a new direction. Unfortunately, some technical issues cropped up during the reveal. The most disappointing one was the 20v20 mode crashing mid-match, cutting down the amount of time we get to see it in action. Modern Warfare's beta phase kicks off on the PlayStation 4 on September 12th for pre-order customers, followed by an open PlayStation 4 beta September 14th to 16th. On PC and Xbox One, the pre-order beta is the 19th to the 20th, and the open beta is the 21st to the 23rd. In what might come as a surprise to the few people that are still following the game, the 1,000 player battle royale Mavericks Proving Grounds is officially dead in the water. The developers announced the cancellation is due to a lack of funds. While a public beta was planned to kick off in November, paying customers have had access to a variety of closed technical tests and alphas for the game. Maverick's high player count was a very attractive feature that no other games were going to offer in the battle royale genre. So it's unfortunate to see the project fail before it ever got a chance. That said, the benchmark for these games is incredibly high and anything short of a spectacular title, the game still would have had a very hard time finding a dedicated audience. 343 are making a bold promise for the Halo Master Chief Collection's upcoming PC release. They're calling their anti-cheat solution industry leading. Halo's legacy stems in large part from the community's ability to create custom maps and modes. Allowing for that kind of flexibility without accidentally banning people is a tricky hill to climb. It's also essential to the success of any multiplayer game to not be riddled with hackers. With the rise of battle royale games and international player populations, cheating specifically on PC has become a more significant issue than ever before. A game like Halo could simply succeed or fail based on the quality of its anti-cheats. Hopefully 343's claim is realistic. The Xbox One version of Halo Reach was expected to get a test session soon, but due to memory limitations on the console, the testing has been delayed. The current version of the Master Chief Collection on consoles doesn't include Reach, but because the PC version of it will, 343 are adding it to Xbox One. Unfortunately, it looks like the improvements being made for the PC version are a bit heavy for the aging Xbox One's hardware. 343 does still expect to release Reach on Xbox One, so the delay certainly isn't a cancellation by any stretch. No Man's Sky's next major update, Beyond, finally has a release date. It drops on August 14th and includes massive improvements to the game. One of the standouts is full VR support on both PlayStation 4 and PC. Beyond is also expected to add a host of multiplayer features that have been absent since the game's launch, but were a key aspect of the game's marketing. 
CSGO got a major update this week which added unranked matchmaking. This has been a highly requested feature ever since the game's official competitive matchmaking was added. Until now, players had to choose between casual matches which have different rules and more players, or what the game is primarily built for, competitive. The problem of course is that every match of competitive counts towards your skill ranking and players with rankings too far from one another can't really play together. So players that want to play a few rounds with their friends to warm up or enjoy the game the way it's meant to be played couldn't until now. Called scrimmage maps, a small selection of maps can now be played in unranked public matchmaking. The available maps are Ruby, Breach, and Seaside. Borderlands 3 has officially gone gold. The game launches on September 13th for Xbox, PlayStation 4, and on the Epic Game Store for PC as a timed exclusive. Also, side news, my alternative channel Brick Vault, which focuses on custom Lego builds and cool dioramas, we've just released instructions on how to make three different types of clap traps from the Borderlands games, and they're pretty freaking awesome, so if you're at all interested in Lego and Borderlands, go check it out. I'll leave a link in the video description. GTA Online's recent Diamond Casino update pulled in the most players since the mode's launch in 2013. The update finally opens the doors of the game's casino. Players can gamble with their in-game money to expand their wealth, play card games with friends, and more. However, because GTA Online's in-game currency can be purchased with real-world money, the update has actually been withheld from over 50 different countries due to gambling laws. In fact, the US itself is currently struggling with video game gambling regulations, so there's a chance that this update could be removed from the US markets in the future. Ghost Recon Breakpoint got a PC Features trailer showcasing the game's rather extensive PC options. All the usual options you'd expect in a modern PC title are present. Unlocked frame rate, a wide range of graphical quality settings, multi-monitor support, and more. The previous Ghost Recon game Wildlands also had a pretty robust PC port, though the game is notoriously hard to run on high settings even on expensive hardware. A beta for Breakpoint starts in September ahead of the game's full release on October 4th. Fortnite's Season 10 update is here. As usual, it makes broad sweeping changes to the game that will likely take players some time to get used to. This time they've added a drivable mech suit called Brute. It accommodates two players, a driver and a gunner. In the gunner seat, players can use a shotgun and missile launcher. All of the game's existing vehicles have been removed, making the mech suit the only high mobility option. Apex Legends devs Respawn Entertainment have been working on a AAA VR game for some time now. We're not exactly sure what it'll be, but they'll be revealing it at this year's Oculus Connect in September. It could be a full Titanfall VR experience or a totally new IP. In the past, it's been made clear that multiple projects are in development at Respawn, but they've confirmed not to expect a new Titanfall game anytime soon. With Jedi Fallen Order in the works and Apex Legends released, it seems like this VR title is the only thing left cooking in Respawn's oven for the time being. I'm very curious to see what it might be. I personally think a VR Titanfall game could be pretty fantastic. Bungie have delayed the next Destiny 2 expansion, Shadowkeep, by a few weeks. To compensate for the delay, multiple events will be repeated until Shadowkeep's new launch on October 1st. The update for the expansion will make Destiny 2 a free-to-play title. The pricing of the game's DLC has an insanely complicated past that is still tough to make sense of. Destiny 2 and its first season pass content will be free-to-play. Shadowkeep will cost $35 at launch, and it can be played as a standalone. Pre-ordering it nets you the game's second season pass content, so if you pre-order Shadowkeep and then install the free-to-play version of Destiny 2 when it launches, you should have pretty much everything Destiny 2 offers. At least I think. In our final story this week, HTC's updated VR headset, the Vive Cosmos, has leaked. It was briefly listed on a UK online store for around $850. That's more expensive than Oculus's premier headset, the Rift S, but still less than Valve's Index system, which runs at over $1,000. 
The Cosmos is a tethered VR headset and includes controllers at the base price. There's not much else to go on in terms of features or specs, but based on the price point, I'm expecting to see a significant resolution and or frame rate refresh rate increase. And that wraps it up for today's episode of This Week in Gaming. As always, let me know in the comments if there is an article or story you think we missed that is worth covering. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.